Well, this morning I was invited to come and speak on reimagining youth ministry. And in the past five to 10 years, any solid research that has been published and released has pointed to something really alarming to me. They have said that over 50% of church teenagers, when they graduate from their high schools and graduate from their churches, 50% are walking away from their faith, putting their faith in a lockbox in the college years and beyond. 50% of our youth are walking away from their faith. Not to even mention the teenagers that aren't even connected to our churches and learning about what it looks like to walk with Jesus. Something isn't working. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. No longer can the church afford to do the same thing over and over again in youth ministry and expect a different result. The things that were done 5, 10, 20 years ago are no longer working. Something desperately needs to change. And I believe that it starts with leadership. Not just a youth pastor's leadership, but an entire church's leadership. Churches all over the country, I am seeing now on a weekly basis, churches that are stopping the insanity and reimagining how to reach teenagers and their families and disciple them. And I believe that it is in the reimagining of youth ministry that there are some significant philosophical shifts that need to take place. Primarily, I believe in our churches from a really big picture perspective is that our youth ministries need to contribute to and collaborate with the whole church for meaningful and intentional and mutual ways to integrate students into the life of the church. Now, it's a lot of really big words and kind of could mean a whole lot of things. So let me unpack just a couple of what these things, these philosophical shifts could mean. Specifically, I think there are three philosophical shifts that need to take place in youth ministry today. The first is intergenerational relationships, not siloed programs. In the last generation, so much of a youth pastor's time, and I have been one of them, so much of a youth pastor's time has been really invested into creating programs and running events, not walking with teenagers and parents and volunteers. So what if we turned that upside down? If we really believe as a church that it takes a village to raise a child like Deuteronomy 6 commands us, the village is much larger than a youth ministry. What if we looked for meaningful ways for the old to bless the young and the young to learn from the old and for there to be mutual ways of relationship with one another? We need our youth pastors to remind the church of their responsibility of spiritually raising teenagers. And in case you think that maybe teenagers don't want to spend time with adults and they think they're all weird and old and kooky, let me be the first to assure you that that is just not true. Teenagers crave to be with adults that care about them and that love them and that are interested in their lives. We've got to also look beyond our churches and into the family. I believe that immediate families and the spiritual family have long been ignored in our churches in our efforts to create safe havens of youth ministries for teenagers. The second major philosophical shift that I see is integration. In all things, our youth ministries need to look and see what God is at work in doing in our whole church. Teenagers long to be a part of a larger story. And the church's faith story, our faith story, is deep and rich and revolutionary. So when students are brought into that kind of faith, integrated faith, something really deeply transformative happens in their souls. When students are integrated into every part of our churches and not just siloed off and isolated into their separate programs and services and spaces, we communicate to them that they are a vital part of the church today and now, not just someday when they grow up and become adults. Some of the most profound integrated ministry happens on intergenerational missions trips and retreats and rite of passages. Um, when students are involved in children's ministry and worship experiences, um, it's when they go over and have brunch at an auntie's house on a Saturday morning. It is time for the church to stop abandoning their youth to youth ministries, 
to instill their faith. We need the church to rise up and take her place in the lives of the coming generation. The third philosophical shift that I'm seeing all over the country is developmentally specialized experiences. Let me assure you, I am not a believer that intergenerational relationships and integrated youth ministry needs to require that we dissolve youth ministry. My experience and my training to adolescents would share that there are massive community, there's massive developmental shifts that are taking place from puberty all the way through the late 20s. And so we need to be specific in how we minister to the needs of teenagers. So things like retreats and rite of passages um, are so significant to faith being formed in the lives of our teenagers. I think our churches need to discern and to ask the question, what are the things that only we can do to instill faith into teenagers and then equip our people and our parents to partner with us in that? Youth ministry needs to be reimagined if we are going to see that 50% statistic change. And it begins with leadership. I believe something about leadership. Leaders take people to places that they may not want to go on their own, but places that people must go. So let's be honest. The way that youth ministry is happening right now is not working like it was in the 90s or even five years ago. Something needs to change. Would you, senior leaders of our churches, be courageous enough to ask God how your church might reimagine youth ministry? May we be strong and courageous leaders who stop the insanity for the sake of our students' souls and for our children's children. Thank you.